Hello, 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 and welcome back to Money Factory. Last episode, we started getting some oil processing set up, and we went all the way from oil that we're extracting in the world, and we turned this into polyethylene, which is a plastic we can use to make better circuits, the next tier of machines, and we'll make some of the previous crafts a lot easier. But we're going to be expanding on this today, because in order for us to progress, we also need polyvinyl chloride. Now this is made from the same stuff, but it's going to give us a different result, and we're going to need a couple more machines to do that. So I did start planning some stuff out. We're going to need another fluid drilling rig first, and we're going to want to build this in a chunk with salt water in it, which should be here. Now we just need to get some power over there somehow. All right, with some power, this should start extracting some salt water. So the next step in our processing, we're going to need a couple of machines. I'm going to make six chemical reactors, and hopefully that's enough. And then we're also going to want an electrolyzer. I think this is the right one. So to make what we need to, we're going to take the oxygen gas out of the chemical reactor with ethylene in it. And then I'm going to put an electrolyzer above this, but I first need to take this off so this doesn't export and then we're going to want an electrolyzer above this and this is where our salt water is going to go into now if you screw drive the bottom of these aluminum drums it will set it to auto output from the bottom and that's the only way you can export these automatically but then in the electrolyzer we should be able to turn salt water into chlorine gas and this is also going to give us some extra hydrogen gas so i'm going to need to rearrange this business Ooh, so we have some chlorine getting made. Ethylene and chlorine gas together is going to give us vinyl chloride. The polyvinyl chloride, we want to go into the next chemical reactor. And then this also outputs hydrochloric acid, but we don't want that to go out. And then we also want oxygen with the vinyl chloride. And then if we react this together, we should see some polyvinyl chloride. And then we can finally fluid solidify this to get some sheets. Now we are definitely going to need to fix some stuff up here because this is a mess and nothing is outputting into anything. <laughs> so it's not exactly ideal, but we did get some at least. So the next step in the process is going to be to make this iron three chloride made from hydrochloric acid and a little bit of iron dust. Hydrochloric acid we actually get from the making of vinyl chloride. As a byproduct so that was in there i'm going to make this its own separate thing but hydrochloric acid goes into a chemical reactor with a little bit of iron should make iron three chloride which we can output into another chemical reactor and now this is where we're going to be making the next tier of circuit boards instead of needing the ones with phenol and silver we're going to be making them out of plastic and copper so to make these circuit boards, we're going to need some polyvinyl and sulfuric acid. And then sulfuric acid we make by reacting hydrogen sulfide, which comes from the sulfuric light fuel, and a little bit of oxygen. So those two together should make sulfuric acid, which we can then put into another chemical reactor along with those polyvinyl chloride sheets. Not all of them, preferably. And then we need those plastic boards. Oh, wait, no, that's copper foil that we need for that. The reason we're using polyvinyl here is because we can use polyethylene, but this only gives us one. And using the polyvinyl gives us two circuit boards. Later on, we will unlock more complex plastics that will increase our output. We don't have access to those right now. So then we just need some copper foil. So some of that in here. We'll make some plastic circuit boards. And then those circuit boards with some more copper foil and the iron three chloride will make the printed circuit boards. Shoo, that was a lot. I know this feels super messy, but that's just because I don't have like access to anything, any logistics yet. But once we get like AE2 and ender tanks, I think we'll be chilling. So this is just one of the circuit components that we need in order to craft the next tier of LV, HV, and MV circuits. I would also like to start making SMDs. Up until now, we've been making resistors the same way we have ever since the beginning. And the same goes for... Well, that's it for that. <laughs> but with SMDs, we unlock a 
easy way to batch craft a whole bunch of these parts for the circuits. So this just requires two little two little things, and then we make 24 of these at a time, which we can then use to batch craft a whole bunch of circuits. So we're gonna want to unlock the ability to craft these, but first we need an HV assembler, and that's gonna require us to get the HV machine parts. All of these are made out of stainless steel, and this is going to be made in the blast furnace again at HV. And we're going to need to mix together some iron, nickel, manganese is a new one, but this is found with pyrolusite in a manganese vein. Also going to want some of this tantalite to mine up, and then chromium, which we do already have. So it looks like I need to go on a mining trip to find tantalite and um, manganese. So let's see what we can go find. Manganese veins can spawn in the nether, so it wouldn't hurt to look for it in here. Just because nether ores um, double the output that they drop. Well, I finally found a vein. But, uh, it's pretty small. <laughs> oh, it's also in the lava. Uh, ha! Success. It would be awesome if it wasn't right under the lava, though. Or in the lava. Okay, I think I mined all that I was able to here, so let's get out of here. We can crush these guys up to double them. Alright, so I got all of our dust together to make stainless steel. We're only going to need 30 to get the first assembler. So then our stainless steel is smelted in the blast furnace with HV power. So I'm going to need to let this run for a little bit to get all of those. Hey, we made it to the HV age. While I'm waiting on the rest of the stainless steel to smelt up, we can also go ahead and craft the MV circuit assembler. This is what's going to allow us to craft these next tier of circuits, because all of these are MV recipes now. Alright, so I've got the last of the stainless steel that we need. And with all of our little components crafted up... Okay, and then here is our HV assembler. Boom. Now we should be ready to craft some SMD components. Pretty sure most of these take polyethylene to craft. So I'm going to put this by the extractor. Now, I have a theory to get this to work. Um, because this needs HV power. If I put a transformer down, flip it around so that we have... How do I get this to... There we go. Transform up into HV power. Have it output to here. And then put the assembler down. And we should get HV power in here. Now granted, we're not going to be able to run anything else while this is running. Because it's going to use all four of our generators here in order to work. But now we can start crafting some SMDs. Which we're going to use to craft a whole bunch of LV and MV circuits. So I'd probably like to craft a stack of each of these. And then maybe a stack of HV circuits as well. The MV circuits no longer require the LV circuits in order to craft. They can be crafted completely from scratch, so that will be very nice. But then the HV circuits will need one MV circuit per circuit to craft. How many times did I say circuit? Okay, looks like I have a bit of collecting to do. Actually, you really think about it, this is not that expensive. This is for a full stack of LV circuits. It's mostly just the circuit boards that we need a lot of. So I probably have some work to do here. <laughs> so I've been gathering some materials and I think I'm ready to start crafting our SMDs and make uh, some LV circuits. I need an inventory clear. I'm going to solve this problem here really soon. I was debating whether or not I wanted to uh, get through AE2 today and get a storage system going. And I think that's what I want to do now that I have these LV circuits. I think I'm going to try to knock these out. But let's start making some SMD components. I'm going to need to borrow this extractor. <laughs> we'll fix this again soon too. Auto crafting is coming out very soon. Alright, extractor. So that we can extract our uh, polyethylene into the assembler. And we're just going to pop some of that in there. And then that should go there. Cool. We're going to want some resistors made from electrum and carbon. I forgot that we have to turn everything off while this is running because it's going to use all of our power right now okay let me try this again we're just gonna have to like stop and start it as it's going 
Hopefully it doesn't like completely eat through my benzene. The upgraded version of the resistors, which doubles how many you're getting, uh, is made from tantalum instead of electrum. Tantalum dust you get as a byproduct of tantalite. I think that's the only way to get it as from what I'm seeing. We're processing tantalum pentoxide. It's a whole thing, but we're not ready for that. So we're just going to do the more expensive recipe for now. And the same is for transistors. There's a recipe that doubles it with tantalum, but for now, resistors are going to be made from annealed copper and some gallium. Then we'll want some capacitors, and we're going to make this with aluminum foil and PVC. You can make this with just normal polyethylene sheets, but this one gives you more. All right, so there's all those. That should be all of the SMD parts we need for the LV circuits at least. Now one thing I don't have are CPU chips. These are made the same way as the other wafer chip recipes, but now we need a diamond lens. So I'll have to get one of those real quick. Digging straight down is a really good idea. Don't let anybody ever tell you otherwise. See? So we make our diamond lens by cutting a diamond block into plates, and then we can lathe that plate to get a lens. And then we can use that to laser engrave some wafers, which I should have some left over. And then we can put those back into the cutter to get the CPU chips. And then that should be the last component we need for a bunch of LV circuits. And then these we are going to be using to jump into A2, which is going to be our way of generating a digital storage system to hold all of our items. Instead of having all these random chests lying around, we can store all of our items in one place. It'll unlock some better logistics for us to transport our items between different places. And then we can also unlock auto crafting, which is basically, well, it's auto crafting. You can, we'll be able to request items and have it craft it for us automatically instead of running around, putting items into different places it's gonna make life a whole lot easier. So I'm gonna let these craft up and I will be back in a minute. Okay, so now I'm ready to jump into AE2. I believe we're gonna need a couple of new materials for all of these machines, yes. First material we're gonna want is dark steel, made by owling together obsidian and steel. We're not gonna need a whole lot of this, I believe. Next, we're gonna to need to find some certus quartz. And assuming I mined a bunch of nether quartz, we should have some? Okay, maybe not. Ah, that's because Certus is its own vein apart from nether quartz. Oh, I found it. Is it above me? Oh, cool. We can also uh, macerate the Certus quartz to double the output from 2 to 4, which is a mighty large increase. But then when we crush it, we can't get the actual Certus quartz. I need to make sure I save some of this to smelt up. We need an autoclave if we turn it into dust, and I don't have one of those yet. So we're going to skip that step for now. Once we do have some to get plates out of this, we need to turn it into blocks and then pop it into the cutter. Now we can go ahead and make the charger. Now, can we connect this to our EU power? Oh, we can. Oh, awesome. Cool. With our charger, we're going to want to pop some of our Certus Quartz in there, which will charge it up into charged Certus Quartz. Next, we're going to need to take some of our charged Certus Quartz and pop it into a mixer with Redstone, uh, Nether Quartz, and some water, I believe. This is going to make Fluix, which is another component we need for crafting these machines. And then to make Fluix plates, we again need to make a full block of this stuff, which we then throw into the cutter. We can then use those Fluix plates to craft the energy acceptor, which we then need to make the ME controller. And this is sort of going to be the main power source for all of our A2 system. So hopefully, can we just plug this in here? Or do we need an energy acceptor? Oh, that just works. That's pretty nice. Maybe I can do something like this and get our battery buffer going. That way we can store some power. And then put it in there this way. Beautiful. Now anything connected to this ME controller will also receive power. And that's where we're going to need the inscriber next. I need some aluminum components first. 
So our inscriber is going to allow us to make the different like circuit components for A2. There are three different types of processors, and right now the inscriber is the only way we have available to get these. Later on, we'll be able to make these in circuit assemblers, but that's not until IV, and that's like two more tiers away, so we're going to have to wait for that. But for now, this is the only way we have to do this. So first things first, we're going to need to go find a meteor. So by popping a compass into a charger, that will give us a meteorite compass. And this is going to point towards where a meteor is in the world. So it looks like we have some swimming to do. It's underground somehow. So we need to dig inside this meteor to the middle. Wherever that is, I can't really tell in here. Ah, there you are. So if we break open this mysterious cube in the middle, it's going to drop a whole bunch of presses. We want to pick up all of these. Now these are what are going to be used inside the inscriber in order to make our circuits. Each one is going to require a different material in order to make. So, and then each one is also going to take printed silicon. And applied energistic silicon is made by smelting Certus dust. So that one's super easy. And then for the three processors, we have the calculation circuit, which takes Certus quartz, the logic circuit, which takes gold, then the engineering one takes diamonds. So knowing all that, we have a couple more uh, little blocks we have to craft up before we can actually use our A2 system. We're going to need an ME drive. And I believe everything is craftable here. Nothing weird. Yeah, this is all fine. So anytime we want to make one of these processors or the circuits, we just need to put the respective press inside. And then the item that we want, so this one will make the calculation circuits. And then every circuit is also going to take a silicon mold. And then we combine the two of those with an LV circuit to get the finished processor. So there we go, there's two of those. One we're going to use to make a crafting terminal. I'm just going to pop that on the front of somewhere. How can I do this? I may need some cables. Hold on. Putting Certus Quartz in a wire mill will get us quartz fiber, which we then alloy smelt together with flux dust to get the cables that we need to in between all of our machines for A2. So one right here, we can put our crafting terminal on top of. My inventory is very full. I'm about to fix that though. So needed a whole bunch of dark steel. To make the ME drive, I lost my plate I needed because I put it in the macerator. <laughs> okay, so we're going to get an ME drive. And this is where we're going to hold all of our storage components for all the items that we're going to be putting in here. And then to make one of these storage components, I'm going to make a 4K one right now. Each tier takes the previous storage component as well. And we have a di couple of different options for crafting these. Everything... Pretty much takes the same recipe. Tempered glass, do we have that? Yes. If we use HV circuits, we'll get four 1K storage cells per craft. So we're definitely going to want to do that. If I can avoid using red alloy, I'm going to do it. <laughs> um, I'm getting ready to make some HV circuits with the new recipe. But there is a new component that we need. And that are these inductors. We have access to the SMD inductors already. Uh, we can't make tantalum yet, but we can do the one that makes 16. We just need a new material, and that is nickel zinc ferrite. And we'll have to blast furnace this. And we need some ferrite mixture. And this is made with iron, nickel, and zinc, all of which we already have. So this is pretty easy to grab. And we only need a little bit of it to start off. So we're going to pop this in the blast furnace. And then if we combine these with some annealed copper wire, we're going to get those inductors. Cool, now we can make HV circuits, which we can then use to make the 1K storage components. We also need some tempered glass, which is made in the arc furnace. Alright, so there's four of those, and we can then use that to upgrade to the 4K storage. Cool, and then we can't just use the storage component on its own. We need a cell housing to put it into, just with some electrical steel and red alloy cables. How do you find anything in here? This is how I've been living for, like, I guess two days and nine hours and 20 minutes. <laughs> it's rough. This is about to get fixed, though.
So we make our item cell housing. And then we pop our storage component. Oh, not the 1K one. Don't do that. The 4K one. There we go. Now we can take this, put it into our drive, and we have a little bit of storage. We're definitely going to need more of those in the future. But we can pop our crafting terminal down. And I like to make this a little bigger, which we can do in the terminal style there. But we're able to start storing some items in here. Right now, we're only going to be able to store not that many this thing is going to fill up really quick but we'll be able to expand from here and by really quick i mean really quick it's not going to hold like anything and it's already full the good news is that now we can work on making some more storage pieces so that is our ae2 system all built up we're going to dive deeper into this um, next episode we'll be able to like store fluids in our system digitally oh look we're building up density that's awesome and then we can pull from that wherever we need power in the future. And then we'll be able to fix up our chemical processing system over here. Because this is, this does not look, <laughs> this is rough. But we'll get all that going in the next episode. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and goodbye.